we play a round called Bake Off as Mocked Off. Uh, <laughs> this game involves Ivo Graham and Ed Gamble, so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a stand-up challenge. I launched a wheel of news, and whoever chooses to stop one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. OK, here we go. Let's spin the wheel, please. And the topic is technology. Ivo. I think... Uh... I think our generation were a bit of a crossover generation when it came to uh, modern technology. So, for example, uh, I had access to, uh, to computers as a teenager at my school, but not proper video games. So the, uh, the video games that I played as a teenager were the ones that came free with the computers. <laughs> and let me tell you what a rock and roll mid noughties existence that was. <laughs> Those long afternoons on my own spent playing Minesweeper, playing pinball, and trying to scroll down all the way to the bottom of Microsoft Excel. <laughs> not strictly a video game, but when you're lonely enough, Still feels like an achievement. <laughs> and I'm proud to stand here now and boast in front of you all that I've completed Excel and lived to tell the tale. <laughs> I've gone where few mortals dare to tread. All the way down, all the way right. Written my name in that bottom right-hand Excel cell. I won't tell you what that cell is called, it would blow your minds. <laughs> it's been a joyous moment just hovering over Control P. And just imagining the carnage. <laughs> Did I have the balls? the sheer granite testes to print off the entirety of Excel on the school paper supply. <laughs> I didn't in the end, but the thought experiment was enough alone. <laughs> and in my last year, we got a games console, our first group video game, Mario Kart. If you're not familiar with it, it's the greatest video game and thing of all time. <laughs> Since tried intercourse, still prefer Mario Kart. <laughs> Mario Kart reactively encouraged to finish first. <laughs> and if you do, there's no shame. Well done, okay, that leaves us with Ed. Let's see what you've been left with. Let's spin the wheel. And the topic is relationships. Where you go. I am in a serious relationship. That's what she makes me say. Serious. <laughs> I'm in a serious relationship. This is my partner. Sounds like you're in a law firm, is what it sounds like. <laughs> serious relationship. Sounds like a disease. How's your relationship? I'm sorry to say it's serious. <laughs> I'm not in a serious relationship, I'm in a silly relationship. You tell me if you think this sounds like a serious relationship. The other day, me and my girlfriend were having a discussion about the Beatles. At some point during that discussion, she forgot George Harrison's name. Now, she previously knew George Harrison's name, but her brain did something to her that all of our brains do to us now and again, it just deleted a fact for no reason. <laughs> and it panics you when that happens. You think, am I going mad? Am I going senile? You go on a spiral of panic and worry, and I could see she was worried. And any good boyfriend in that situation would have told her George Harrison's name, and I am a good boyfriend. But I am a better comedian. <laughs> so what I chose to do in that situation was write down every guess that she took at George Harrison's name. I have memorised them. <laughs> and I'm now going to recite them to you, the good people of Mock the Week. <laughs> Here we go. Guess number one. Jean Paul Ringo. John. There it is. <laughs> We thought there might have been two Johns in the Beatles. Maybe the Beatles were a double John band. <laughs> and as if we'd remember them in that order, we wouldn't go John, Paul, Ringo, John. We wouldn't bookend it with Johns. <laughs> it would be John, John, Paul, Ringo, Paul, Ringo, John, John, or Paul, Ringo and the Johns. <laughs> she knew that was wrong immediately. I squawked in her face. Guess number two. John, Paul, Ringo, Joseph. Hello, Joseph. <laughs> What are you doing in there? I didn't realise the Beatles were a nativity-themed band. <laughs> Three guys with 60s hairdos, one child with a tea towel tied to his head. <laughs> Again, she knew it was wrong. I was on the floor already. Then her brain gave her a little free pass, gave her a clue, gave her the surname. Thank you, brain. John Paul Ringo, Tony Harrison. <laughs> oh, Tony, you're not part of this conversation. Please remove yourself from the vicinity immediately. I said, you're half right. You're half right. I promise you, her next guest was Harrison Ford. <laughs> Thank you very much. Bravo. Very good. Give that round of points to Ed Gamble.